Great. So brilliant. So um yes, the foundation is working in partnership with Wiltshire Council um, to help deliver part of the county's allocation of the government's household support fund, which has been allocated to councils in England by the Department of Work and Pensions. So the aim of this fund is to provide support to households who are struggling to buy food, pay utility bills, and help with the purchase of other essential items or costs between now and 31st of March, 2024. Wiltshire's Energy, Food and Community Support Fund has um, been designed in partnership with the council. This was enable voluntary groups to apply for funding so they can give support to individuals most impacted by the increased cost of living. Um, the programme is intended to cover a wide range of direct supports, and I will move on to the grants can fund on the next slide to help those who are struggling to pay household bills, afford food, and other related essentials. Now, for this programme, priority is being given to applications from small and medium voluntary groups. So what we mean by that is those with an annual income of one million or less. And activities are focusing on people on low incomes in immediate need. And as you will have guessed, as this funding is from coming from the Wiltshire Council, the people who benefit from the grant must live in Wiltshire Council geographical area. If you are supporting households um, in Swindon, uh, we would suggest you contact Swindon Hill Council for details of their HSF4 schemes. Um, and when we send up slides, there will be a link directly to getting the contact details for Swindon Borough Council there. So what can the grant pay for? Um, we're encouraging applications from voluntary groups that will help support individuals with their household utility bills, um, whether that be energy, such as gas and electricity, water, broadband, phone bills, solid fuel. I know a lot of households in work, the council are still on solid fuel or gas. Um, providing household items, such as fridge, freezers, ovens, cookers or heaters. Other household items such as clothing, blankets, curtains, and drafts or cooders, all about designed to about keeping that individual warm during the winter period. Access to food such as food parcels, supermarket vouchers, vouchers food via lunch clubs, community meals, or initiatives such as cookery courses. And um, help providing funding for transport costs, whether it be to and from community activities community transport, repairing a car, um, repairing a um, bicycle or buying a bicycle. And also providing warm spaces during the winter period. For this particular programme, uh, we can't accept applications for an organisation now for costs. However, you can include an element of your overhead costs in your application, but the majority of funding should be spent on direct support. So some examples of projects we have already supported include those offering community meals and lunch clubs, and the grants have supported the food element of that work. Cookery courses, again, the grant has funded the food element of the work, as well as providing some equipment, such as slow cookers. Community transport or link schemes, to cover the costs for those unable to pay. Um, setting up funds to purchase items such as supermarket vouchers, fuel vouchers or household goods such as pickers, fridges and microwaves. Um, and there are a number of schemes out there where organisations can actually purchase online vouchers to give to individuals rather than cash. And um, the funding as a highlight on the last slide can go towards providing warm spaces to enable people to escape from the cold and connect with others over the winter period. Um, so how much can you apply for? So it's really important to highlight, if you're an organisation who already holds an active grant with us, you are more than welcome to apply to this programme as well. Grants are from £500 with um, no other limit. Um, so don't be frightened. You think, oh, well, um, which community foundation normally only do £5,000? There's actually no other limit to this grant programme. But we will highlight that um, the need across the county is widespread, and so the funds particularly might be limited. 
again, I wanted to highlight, like unlike the other foundations programs, for this particular fund, we cannot accept applications for an organization's core costs, but you can include an element of your overhead costs within your application but the majority of the funding should be spent on providing direct support to individuals. Um, we aim to award the grants as quickly as possible. So applications will be checked against the programme priorities and urgency of the funding and timing of when you need the grants. Um, so give us a call to discuss any project um, and we can um, choose three for you. Most importantly, any funding awarded needs to be fully spent by the 31st of March 2024. Um, this is to adhere to which council and the DWP requirements. And reporting on the final spend, um, that's in terms of numbers of individuals you've supported, will need to be provided um, to us by the first week of April. So who can we fund? For those who are familiar with the foundation, our standard eligibility criteria apply to this programme. Um, so you need to be a constituted voluntary or community organisation, a registered charity, or a not-for-profit company, including community interest companies, where the majority of directors receive no payment from the company. You must have an active voluntary management committee, either trustees or directors, with at least three people who are not related to each other or in a long-term relationship living in the same address. And again, who we fund? We fund local or regional organisation. You can be a local branch of a national organisation as long as you have a local management committee based in Wiltshire and your own bank accounts. And again, highlighting that the beneficiaries of this funding need to live in the Wiltshire Council geographical area only. So what can the programme not fund? So unfortunately, schools and statutory bodies such as city, county or parish councils and health institutions are not eligible. Charities who are operating on, solely on a national basis. Um, Organisations that have already applied directly to Wiltshire Council for HSF funding, including food banks and factories. We are waiting for clarity on this from Wiltshire Council for that last bit, um, as we're only noticed that notified of that caveat yesterday evening. So in the meantime, if you do want to make an application and you have applied to Wiltshire Council as well, directly funding, please contact us so we can discuss this with you. Um, grant solely for an organisation of core costs that I highlighted for we cannot fund activities which duplicate an existing service, um, one-off sponsorship events, um, the advancement of religion, um, medical research and equipment or animal welfare. So the eligibility requirements. Um, if you've already previously applied to the foundation, then we may already hold all these on record for you. So we will need to see a constitution. We also need to have a safeguarding policy and an equality policy. Financial records or accounts, which show your income, expenditure and reserves. And you need to have less than 12 months running costs in number of reserve, reserves and a bank account with two signatories who are not related to each other and a recent bank statement. Um, as we said on the slide, if you don't hold any of these documents above, please talk to us and we can try and help. If you are a new organisation um, who do, doesn't have all right things already in place, you may already be able to apply through another charitable organisation. And if you do need support with your safeguarding policy, we are holding a safeguarding awareness session on the 26th of September. And um, please join us for that. It is free. Um, it's a virtual event and we'll send you details of that afterwards as well. So the application process. Um, please read through the criteria on our webpage. Um, you'll be able to read that um, all about the eligibility and fund priorities again. We do have a short um, online application form to complete. Um, and once you have submitted the form, um, we will complete the eligibility checks, make sure you're eligible to apply. And we have a really supportive approach to our grant making. So please don't worry about getting the application form right or using the right kind of words. Um, we will contact you to discuss your application in further detail. 
And again, as I've highlighted, we are aiming to award grants as quickly as possible. And a decision will e be emailed to you usually within 14 days of application. All grants must be fully spent by the 31st of March 2024. In January, we will contact anyone who has been awarded funding to confirm how much you have left, how much you spent so far, and um, how many um, people you have supported. And at the end of the grant, um, there'll be a short report that you'll need to complete in early April 2024 um, of the number of households and individuals that you have um, supported. Um, so just a quick overview of the applications we, uh, questions we ask in the application. Um, so um, we will ask you for a brief description of the aims and objectives of your organisation, as well as your management committee or trustees. Um, a description of your project or activity and how the grant will be used to support individuals. And if you're looking to help them with their household bills, how much financial support they will be providing. And who will be benefit from the grants and what their needs and how will you identify them in terms of will it be through um, a client base that you're already working with or referral um, directly to you. We'll also be interested to know what are the connections you have with other organisations and, and how will your services complement them. And finally, a budget breakdown of how the grant um, is the grant you're applying for as well. Um, so here are our contact details. Just to reiterate, we're always happy to support you with an application form or chat through a proposal. You may feel that this particular programme is not suitable for you, but please do so in place to any small grassroots organisations you want to us about the funding. Um, if you have previously applied to the foundation, um, please contact us as well. We may be able to potentially streamline the application form um, for you from there. Um, but yeah, there's our contact details. Um, please give us a call or drop us an email. Um, but now I'll stop sharing my slides. Um, and I um, hand over to Helen Maidment, who is the funding officer for Transcendent with the lottery. Hi. Uh, there we are. There I am. Okay. Let me just do this seamlessly. <laughs> the usual handover of. Let me get it up here. And then. There we go. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. Yep, can see it. Brilliant. Perfect. Okay, I can't I can't see anyone, so <laughs> I'll I'll just kind of I'm sure someone will shout up if they've got any questions. Um so yeah, just give me a shout. So hi, I'm Hannah. Um and hopefully I think I recognize a couple of people, so hopefully people uh know that I'm back from eternity. So Nice to see some people on this call. Um, I'm just going to do a really quick overview of our new funding. It sounds very similar to the Wiltshire Community Foundation one, um, but it's our um, cost of living fund. So I'll run over trying to do that. Is it moving? There. Can everyone see the next slide? Yeah, can, can see Perfect. it. Okay, so um, this is for organisations who want to be applying between £10,000 and £75,000. It's um, a government support package for England. So it's for organisations specifically who are supporting communities that are under pressure from the cost of living. Um, I've put these key examples here. I think if you're kind of working outside of these um things I'm not sure the funding's for you so I think you kind of have to be delivering at least one of these services if not it might be that you've got a sort of one-stop shop model you might be doing a couple of these things um but I've listed them there I think you'll kind of know if they apply to your organization or not um so yeah I think 
that's the the main points really i i can't pick out any other examples so i think if you're not yeah just to say if you're not delivering these services the funding's probably not for you um okay let's move on it's not wanting me to move let's see strange can anyone can you see the next slide it's still on the same slide hannah weird how about oh, now there we go it's changed ah, okay sorry about that okay so um we can fund you to kind of continue and expand what you're already doing i think that's the key for this funding to kind of bear in mind that you absolutely shouldn't be um kind of doing anything new uh, to try and sort of get this funding i'm not saying anyone would but it's really about thinking about if you're already delivering in the examples from the previous slide and what you're doing is you're experiencing an upsurge of things so that might be you know numbers of people or um you're just finding that the support that you're offering is is there's much more to be done so this this is kind of the funding for you really it's there's very much a emphasis on uh small to medium sized frontline organizations for this so i've just outlined that there Ten, between 10,000 and 1 million. Um, I've put the caveat in around larger organizations. I think if you're a larger organization that are delivering on a really local basis, you still could potentially get the funding. I think then it's about really showcasing um, how you're working locally, what gaps in those local services you're filling so for example if you're a larger organization kind of working cross wiltshire but what you're seeing is an upsurge say particularly in um a town and you're the only organization delivering one of those services or more potentially i think there's a good kind of basis for you to apply actually um so they're the exceptions from what i've seen otherwise i think it's really about focusing on annual turnover of under a million so yeah just kind of bear that in mind as a larger organization it might be something you want to just run past us before you apply and make that really clear in your um in your application i think as well if you are going to apply about why you're that essential service locally um so i probably will just add what i've noticed so normally we do fund obviously local authority and schools and those sorts of organizations but for this sort of funding because it's government funding um you wouldn't be able to apply if you are um a school or parish council town council and then otherwise the usual kind of organizations that can't apply um is the same okay so same deadline as as the Wiltshire community foundation one it's it's year end so all of the funding kind of needs to be spent by year end. Um, there's, I think in within the application, this applies to all of our funding. So you really do have to showcase to us um, why your organization is embedded locally and how you're involving your community and what sort of strong relationships you have there. And then I think the caveat to that is about that gap in services. So they're the main kind of points around the kind of factual information that we want. Um, again, just to kind of emphasize, don't start a new service. You kind of have to already be that kind of critical service already delivering. We'll only fund those organizations with that increased demand of, of those critical services. And so again, it's just about helping those organizations that are just seeing a surge of people, or it might be that you're working with the same people, but you're just, you know they're, they're needing more help so that's kind of why you want this funding um the only thing kind of additional to that from these slides is that we normally don't fund retrospectively but for this funding you can date back to that july the 24th which is when the funding opened so it, again if you're putting a budget together for this it's just about thinking about backdating that if you've got those on current costs from July onwards, backdating that from July, and then forward dating that to March. So just looking at your budget from that whole um, perspective would be helpful. And then you're getting all the funding that you can possibly get. 
Um, and yeah, we don't normally offer retrospective. So it's really do bear that in mind in terms of putting together your budgets that there's potentially a bit more money there um, if you backdate it to that July date. Um, similar turnaround to our usual application. So you'll hear back from us in 12 weeks. It's a one application process. Um, so you'll apply, you'll hear back from us and you'll get that decision within 12 weeks. Um, we're going to start funding organisations from next month. Um, and the last applications will be funded in January. So it, it is quite a quick turnaround. Um, again, funding does need to be spent by, by March. So all things to consider before you apply. Um, you can apply. So if you've already got a Reaching Communities grant with us, um, you'll already know me because I'll be managing it. So you can apply for this. Same with awards for all. So kind of don't let that hold you back. I think it's then just about being really clear about why this is additional to what we're already funding. And um, so, for example, if we're funding like a salary post for something already through reaching communities, don't apply for that salary post for this sort of funding, basically. Just come and talk to me directly if you need more funding for that. So if you're already getting funding, possibly worth a conversation with me just to throw out the idea. So because I, I just don't like people wasting time on applications. Um, that aren't necessarily well suited. So I think if you're already um, receiving a Reaching Communities grant, come and chat to me about this funding and we'll just chat it through. Um, but otherwise, if it's completely separate and it's additional, then absolutely just go ahead and apply. Um, you can only apply once. So if you um, are turned down for this funding, please don't reapply. And Alongside the application, it's then just about making sure you have got those recent accounts. Um, and what we normally have is um, like a copy. It's like a financial position form. You'll be asked to fill that out and then you'll be asked to propose that um, budget alongside the application. And yeah, that's it. Um, that's a really whistle stop tour of the cost of living fund. I've put the links in there. Um, there is tons of information through that link if you like the questions in advance so if you want to just have a look through them they're on there on that link you can you can take a look through the questions put my email there um, I'm really happy to try and help um, with guiding through this but honestly it's kind, it's kind of being managed centrally so it's one of those things where I'll help where I can if you've got some really specific questions about the form and that sort of thing, the advice line are, are kind of best suited to ask those questions too. But if it's just about throwing out an idea with me because you've already got some funding from this, then I'm probably um, the best person to talk to about that. Um, and that's it. I'm really happy to answer any questions if there is any. Yeah. I'll end the slide so I can actually see. Thanks, Hannah. That's really useful. Um, I don't know if anyone has got any questions they want.